Good day everyone, this is Maria Janeline V. De La Merced, your instructor in IT314. I created this video as a pre-recorded lecture in the form of Q&A, which talks about the lessons that you should learn in your first module, consisting the first parts of Chapter 1, which is entitled Introduction to Information Security. So I am hoping that before you watch this video, You've already read the content of the said module. The content of the following slides are possible questions that you may want to ask after reading the contents in module one. My answers to these questions also serve as an explanation to the content of chapter one. So let's take question number one. Why is information important in developing a system? Information is very important in developing a system because it serves as a foundation on what system are you going to develop and on why are you going to develop the system. Say for example, our school needs a system that will allow our students to get the certificate of grades automatically once they have done registering and requesting it online using the system. The concept became the founding information on what system shall you do? And why should you develop that system? We'll know more about information's importance as we go further. Question number two. Why must information be accurate, timely, complete, verifiable, consistent, and available? First, an information should be accurate, complete, and consistent because users deserves an honest information. Say, for example, the owner of your developed system is a government official. Do you think it would be safe if information in that system is fake and irrational? Information should be timely and always available because users are expected to be demanding. So before releasing a system, information either the most important or less important should be available and always updated when given to the users. Okay. Question number three. How does an information become a noise, a data, an information, or a knowledge? Let me tell you a story as an example on how to identify an information of becoming a noise a data, an information, or a knowledge. Say there are people shouting on the highway because there is a fire accident happened nearby. You as a concerned citizen interviewed someone about what really happened. And upon data gathering, you have known that the fire accident happened in a store whose owner, which is a girl that is a senior citizen, was trapped on that store. It was told that the old lady forgotten to turn off the stove after cooking her meal, and it was the idea all the people have known. But in the next day, the news have told that the reason behind the fire accident is because her son intentionally created a big fire in the old lady's room using gasoline and a lit candle before he leaves the house. Other reasons on why his son did it was also another story. So based on the story, what became the noise? It is the share of the people. What data have you gathered? It should be the fire accident, the old lady, the son, the forgotten stove, and the store. Even the gasoline, okay? and the lit candle. What information have you got? It should be 
the story or stories behind the accident. Now, behind those stories, what is the knowledge? Since knowledge is said to be a fact, then your answer should be the story narrated in the news. Okay, now let's relate the terms in developing a system. Noise there could be your process on how you create your codes neatly and organized. If you have to print such data in a table, why use print calls one by one when you can do it using a simplified array, right? Possible data are the inputs of your users. Information there could be the processes on how you are going to execute the program and the knowledge there is the very output of your system. Okay, question number four. In your own word, what is information assurance? So, basing on the content of your module, okay, there are a lot of statements there defining what is information assurance, right? Information assurance in layman's term simply means assuring that the information is in its full security against any threat, okay? Question number five. Why do these aspects of information needs protection? Availability, integrity, confidentiality, authentication, and non-reputation. Say, for example, you own an online shopping system. You should provide timely pricing of your products. You should provide an accurate availability of your products variants. Your sellers should always provide an honest information about their shop to commit integrity not only for you as the owner of the system but also to the buyers. In terms of confidentiality, the important credentials of your users such as their username and password should only be known by themselves and outsiders should not be able to access it, okay? In terms of authentication and non-reputation, your system shall provide a safe transaction, okay? So it might be messaging like that, that neither the seller nor the buyer can deny the delivered products, okay? Question number six. Why do we need to consider physical and personal security in terms of information assurance, which is considered to be in its physical and perceptual level? Okay, say for example, you developed an ATM machine for a particular bank company. How can you assure that the money inside that machine is safe in terms of physical security? So maybe now you were thinking to have added alarm system, which is very good. You might also think of adding CCTV cameras that can occupy the view that surrounds the machine. Okay, that would be very good uh, measures to do. But what if the money inside uh, that machine might get through other possibilities what if the owner of that bank has an employee with a dark mind as an insider he might be able to get the money not only inside that atm machine but in the bank itself how can you assure that the current system is safe from dark-minded employees how can you make sure that no outsiders might be able to jump into the bank's confidential credentials. So you might be thinking of ways such as mm, the owner should only employ personals with good personality, good history background in terms of education, experiences, and even family background because those might be one of the factors you could get for the dark motivation but as a system developer what can you do 
Okay, so let's answer that for the next question. Question number seven. Why do we need to consider IT and operational security in terms of information assurance, which is considered to be in its infrastructure level? Okay, continuing with our example about the ATM machine that you have developed. Okay, what can you do to prevent hackers and other threats to interrupt the data in your system? especially the credential information of the users. Okay. How can you make sure that when a hacker successfully gets into your program, he will not be able to compute such important credentials? Because it's the work of hackers, right? To compute such things, especially the username and password of a rich man, okay, which is a customer of a certain bank. And then once he get the credentials, he might be able to log it on, okay, and get money on the bank, right? So how can you prevent uh, this type of hacker or how can you prevent him in cracking the codes? So maybe some of you might think to recommend the user in using strong and unusual passwords. Okay, but do you think it's enough? <laughs> okay. Let's say hackers are really hackers, okay? So, yeah, maybe um, later in our future discussion, we'll be discussing a topic about encryption, which is one way to prevent hackers, okay, or other threats in reading the credentials of the users. Okay, let's take question number eight. How do you define threats? What are the possible samples of threats? What are we protecting from threats? And how can we prevent such threats? What could be the consequences and measures? Okay, reading back on your module, um, it is well defined, but I would like to tell more. Okay. Threat is any attack that can destroy a system, either digital, technical, or even manual system. Okay? It might also be accidental, but most of the time, it is purposeful. Okay. Threats could be in a form of a transaction, a malware, and even a person, okay? an insider. We need to learn and understand those attacks for us to protect assets, which can be physical, logical, or systematized. Based on your module, we have six nature of threat, right? Okay, so what could be the possible consequences that those threats can do to your system? And what possible measures can you do to prevent or cure the damage? Okay. So let me give you an example and make sure to take note of it. So, okay, um, that example would or would not be given soon as your answer for your upcoming activity. Okay, okay, one, um, I've already given you examples earlier. One is the ATM machine, okay, and then the certificate of grades, okay. Um, let's have, say for example, you are developing a grade inquiry system. Okay, the information concept should be concentrated on how the instructors will input the individual grades of the students per subject and how will the student know their grade in a particular subject. Okay, so what could be um, some of the security questions there so we have here what okay so what are the possible threats that can be experienced in the future what are the possible measures that we can do to prevent such intrusion or damage okay so maybe um, you were thinking like what if a student one can be able to see my grade which she must not because it's confidential, right? So what if he sees all my grade and use it 
in a particular paper stating that it's her own, okay, that could also be uh, a threat, right, for you and also for him or for her. Okay, so possible measures could be, okay, as a programmer, make sure to test the output of the system. Okay, of course, as a developer, you should always do trial and error before implementing such system. Okay, so administrators and students' scopes and limitations to the system should always be supervised. So you try it first. Okay, what if I am an instructor? Okay, um, do I make sure, do the system make sure that the input grade is really correct or is it really been updated to the proper subject? Okay, as a student, am I really getting the right grade? Is there no problem in the system about giving an output? Oh, I am 94 in this subject. Is this true? Okay. So you should do a trial and error, okay, about the inputs, okay, and especially the outputs. Okay. So, okay, so there is no more possible questions that I have developed based on the module. Um, but if you have questions, okay, you may raise it soon in our next synchronous meeting. Okay, so our, um, our next scheduled synchronous meeting will be more on question and answer also okay, for recorded recitation. Okay, so thank you for listening. Um, just wait again for another pre-recorded lecture for your uh, next module. Okay, so that our synchronous meeting will be purely on recitations and then um, your comments or suggestions or questions okay that uh, you might be built okay um, from the statements okay so that's it thank you for listening god bless everyone